Hey everyone, I wanted to share a quick tip with you on how to create a very simple character controller without using physics by leveraging the Unity Nav Mesh. Normally, with the Nav Mesh, we have a situation like this, and what you would do is you would use the Nav Mesh agent to say, for example, determine that I want to move here, and then the Nav Mesh agent automatically finds its path and moves to the position. What I want to do here instead is I want to have a controller where I control things with keyboard or maybe with a gamepad. So I have something like this. Instead of using the mouse, I will just press my keys on my keyboard or my gamepad and the character moves and it cannot bump into things. Uh, it cannot bump into, for example, this obstacle and also it cannot fall from the nav mesh. So I'm using basically completely simulated um, movement through the transform rather than using physics. And it's very solid. As you can see, I can put myself in uh, kind of like corner situations and the controller always reacts very well. So how do I do this? First thing, I have an object with the nav mesh, of course. I modeled this very simple geometry as a test with uh, ProBuilder. Uh, you can see here that I have the nav mesh surface, which is one of the uh, kind of like new and a bit hidden components that we have for the nav mesh. And I'll provide the link in the description. The other thing is the character. And the character doesn't have any kind of physics. It doesn't have any rigid body. And also, it doesn't have a nav mesh agent. So as you can see, I'm not using the nav mesh agent to calculate the path. Uh, but I'm driving everything through this script and the interaction of this script with the nav mesh itself. So let's go take a look at this script. The script is very simple. It's a mono behavior which implements an interface which comes from the input system and I just use it to read the input. The input is actually read here at the bottom. Uh, you see the on move callback. It takes a uh, vector two and it puts in a vector three. This is just for my ease of use. And with this function, the input is ready to use, but you could use the old uh, input manager if you wanted. The heart of the logic is here, is a function which I call in the update uh, so every frame, the step function will be called. So what, what do I do here? The first thing I do is I check if the magnitude of the input is enough to trigger the movement itself. This is pretty trivial. And then the important part is here. So here I calculate a new position, this variable here, which is basically saying, I want to make a step in this direction. The direction is from the input. And I add the input to the transform position, so I get a new position, which is in this direction, you know, modulated by the delta time and by the speed. And so I get this new position, which is basically a small step in the direction that I want to go to. Then the other thing I do is I declare a nav mesh hit type variable, which is going to contain the result of my, um, of my calculation. And then I call this uh, static function from the nav mesh class, which is called sample position. Now sample position takes a few parameters. The first one is the position that I want to sample. So the, my, my step, um, then it has an out parameter which will contain the results of this calculation. And then uh, this is the maximum distance. You can decide this number however you want. Uh, and then this is a mask to decide which nav mesh uh, basically uh, layers, if you want, to use. And I'm, here I'm using all of them. So this position, this uh, function returns a boolean which tells me if the uh, position is on the nav mesh or not. So if, for example, I'm trying to move outside of the nav mesh or within an object, this is going to return bool, uh, sorry, this is going to return fal false, and then no movement happens. If movement happens, then I just do very simple calculation of uh, the magnitude of the movement. If it's enough, then I just basically make a small teleport of the player in that uh, new position. So the new position is a result of the transform plus the input, uh, but the nav mesh will determine if that position is valid or not. And that that is all, basically. Uh, and this gives me this very, uh, very solid movement where I can basically put myself in very crazy situations. And just to demonstrate what I mean is I can just take a bunch of prefabs, for example, this nice nature pack that I found on the asset store, and I can bring these prefabs to the scene. I can put them inside the uh, nav mesh object. And then when I click generate or bake on the nav mesh, uh, now I can use this object as well as a blocker for the movement. 
And as I was saying before, you can have, you know, funky situations. You can really create uh, your um, scenery the way you want. And look at this. You, I can also use, for example, Pro Builder. I can make small modifications to this mesh. Let's say that I take the vertices here and here and I put them down. So that to create like a small slope that technically the character can work on. So I go back to the object level. I bake the nav mesh again. And now as you can see, the nav mesh is connected. And when I press play, now naturally I can walk up this slope. And as you can see, the character walks up the slope as long as the slope is small enough to get on. And then here I cannot go down. So I can do this and now I cannot go from here, but I can easily walk up this slope. So you can make really interesting geometry, really interesting scenery and everything is always going to be super solid and there's not going to be any issue with like corner cases. So there you go. This is the very simple uh, character controller using NavMesh. Uh, I've actually used it for more complex scenes like this one. Uh, so, you know, everything is actually in the assets. The movement is simple, but the complexity of the scenery will make it stand out. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.